Good day, fellas. I hope you are ready for your daily dose of skill. Today, we are going to do very much requested video and we are going to talk about equipment setups in World of Tanks. We will split this into the four pieces or I suppose to say we are having four segments. What is the difference between standard bounty improved experimental equipment? How to get equipment setups? What equipments do, right? And most importantly, how to use equipment correctly, because I can tell you one thing, what World of Tanks is recommending in certain situations, it is laughable. As an example, uh, T-28 HTC is a um, bravel tank destroyer, even though it has triangle, you need to go in front and you need to bravel. And yet still, uh, World of Tanks community is using Binus, Camonet and uh, Rammer. Uh, by the way, this feature is created uh, with World of Tanks Plus. This is very important thing to say, and you can see commonly used equipment setups. But fellas, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get uh, better information and for free, I would highly recommend to use index page. Uh, just Google Skill for All 2 index or check out description down below. And you can see what content creators are using with one or another uh, setup, right? I think it is very important uh, thing to say or one or another tank, I suppose to say, right? Um, and you can know significantly more accurate and better information that where gaming is offering over there. And plus on top of that, you need to pay for this, which is uh, absolutely absolutely ridiculous if you would ask me, but hey, it is how it is. So first things first, fellas, what are the differences between equipment? Standard equipment is pretty much base equipment in the world of tanks. Everyone should use at least standard equipment. After that, we have a bounty equipment, which is pretty much better than standard equipment. But in order to make it better, you need to upgrade it. And it costs 3 million credits in order to upgrade it to be better than a standard equipment. Right? Keep this in mind. Non-upgraded bounty equipment is equal to standard equipment. Right? So it's nothing special. It's nothing unusual. I would recommend to upgrade it. And no, we never get discounts of those. Uh, on, on those equipment pieces or on those upgrades. So keep this in mind. After that, we have improved equipment or better, better known as bond equipment setup, right? Um, many people would say it is best in place um, set up for any tank and this is absolutely glorious and this is to go for equipment setup. And after that, we have a relatively new equipment, which is experimental equipment. Pretty much it is combining two pieces. If you would pay attention at let's say mobility improvement it is combining the turbo and it is uh, combining the rotation mechanism right so two equipment setups combined into one and in certain situations it is the best in place now when we know the differences between the standard equipment bound improved experiment uh, and experimental right how are you getting the setup uh, or how are you getting equipment pieces well first things first talking about uh, standard equipment, you are just simply flat out buying it. You are paying 600,000 uh, credits or depending on the tier, lower tiers obviously have cheaper equipment set up, right? And you are having it, nothing too crazy, nothing unusual. One tip of advice for every and each player out there, I would highly recommend to buy it on the discount. Buy it upfront on the discount because it's important. How to do that? Whenever World of Tanks are having discounts, you are clicking on the store. This is super important thing to highlight. So you will save a lot of a lot of things, right? You are clicking on the store equipment setup right there in services, right? And you can buy it here. Obviously, wait until it is going to be on the discount, then stock five ventilations, five primers, and whatnot. What your finances are allowing you to do. And after that, whenever you don't need this equipment, you can sell it for a full price. So you are not going to lose any credits whatsoever. It's important. It's nice. It's beautiful. So standard equipment, very, very simple. Now, let's talk about the bounty equipment. Bounty equipment 
is a reward usually from the battle pass. What that basically means, that basically means whenever you are completing the battle pass stage, you have a chance to select the equipment setup. In this type of situation, uh, whenever you are purchasing improved battle pass, you can select bounty equipment setup, but keep this in mind, you will need 3 million credits to upgrade it and to have it better than a standard equipment, right? It is very important thing to say. Nothing too crazy, nothing unusual, hip hip hooray. Now, there is a bounty, uh, there is a bond equipment as well, right? Um, and with a bond equipment, sometimes you are having a good deals. For example, if you would find, uh, if you would find uh, um, bonds over there in the store, you would click on equipment, you can even buy uh, two equipment pieces, uh, pretty much bonded together, if I can say so, right? As an example, ventilation and uh, uh, and um, rammer for 9,000 bonds, which is okay deal because otherwise you would pay 5,000 bonds, right? And bonds is the currency which you are getting for completing the missions or overall playing with the higher tiers. It's hard to come by and it is hard to, uh, to stock a huge amounts of... Uh, those equipment uh, pieces or not equipment pieces, but uh, uh, currency pieces, right? This is important thing to say. Also for a free to play player, with all honesty, it is significantly better to purchase some premium tanks instead of getting equipment set up, just saying. And I think most of the players won't feel that big of a difference between, um, between bond and uh, bounty equipment, at least in my humble opinion. So bond equipment is pretty much for end game players whenever you have so much resources, you do not have anything uh, to do with it anymore, right? That's great. That's amazing. That's awesome. And now last but not least, we have uh, experimental equipment, which is the hardest uh, equipment to come by, right? You cannot buy it. You cannot use bonds in order to get it. Plus on top of that, it costs a lot for you to upgrade it from level one to level three. In total, it costs uh, um, 400... Um, 400 component pieces or alternatively, well, okay, from tier one, it costs 400 um, component pieces to get to the tier two. And from tier two, it costs 2000 pieces in order to get it to the tier three. So this is very, very, very expensive, but this equipment setup is nice. Um, it is truly good. And we will talk later on about examples where you can use it, right? So simple as this, fellas, nothing too crazy, nothing unusual. Um, and I hope it makes sense. Now, Skill, what kind of events uh, are awarding you with components? Frontline awards you with components. Um, uh, so, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm thinking still as hush, as hush, as hush. Steel Hunter rewards you with a, a common component pizzas. Now we had a waffle event, right? And waffle event awarded you with component pieces as well, which is absolutely amazing and absolutely glorious. And this is purely why I completed it. 250, 250, 250, 250, pretty much 1,000 component pieces, which is pretty much, well, not for free, it costed some time and some uh, effort to complete it, but other than that, everything is completely and everything is fine. So pretty much when our gaming is doing events, and if you want to get components, I would highly recommend to complete events, even though they are not the greatest and even though they are boring. This is important thing to say. Now, for a part three, I would... Um, I will go through every and each equipment and we are going to have a conversation what this equipment is the best for and how to use it, right? So ventilation uh, is quite simple. It is boosting uh, um, your tank efficiency. It is useful on every and each tank, even heavy tanks, tank destroyers, if you can use it, Arta, uh, light tanks and whatnot. This is this is a good equipment setup, at least for me. Gun rammer, you are reloading faster, nothing too crazy, nothing, uh, nothing unusual. Improved rotation mechanism is making your tank to turn a bit quicker. So improved rotation mechanism is good on the tank tanks like slowly rotating tanks or tank destroyers overall, right? Or sometimes in certain situations, heavy tanks can benefit from rotation mechanism as well. But in my opinion, uh, when vertical stabilizer is significantly better. What vertical stabilizer does overall, 
whenever you are moving, your aim is huge. With a, with a vertical stabilizer, it is going to be tiny touch smaller and it's going to be better so you can snap better, you can um, aim better and what not, right? Uh, improved aiming unit, I love this equipment setup. Improved aiming unit makes your tank more accurate. And the main difference between vertical stabilizer and improved aiming unit is very much depending on your play style. If you are in love with snapping, if you are moving like crazy, vertical stabilizer is going to be better for you in most of the situations. Uh, and if you know how to pre-aim, um, you are expecting the tank crossing sector uh, from sector A to sector B. If you are pre-aiming, improved aiming unit is better, at least in my opinion, in many cases. Obviously, there are some examples with the tanks with a humongous bloom, right? Then the vertical stabilizer is the best one. Now, there is a lot of misconce misconception about uh, enchanted gun laying drive. This equipment setup is purely for artists. I do not see a single tank where I would use this equipment setup apart artists. I'm not even joking, right? So this is what we need to keep in mind. Skill, I do not understand. Why are you saying so? I do, I do not get it. What is wrong with you? Why are you highlighting this so much? And I do not have any misconception whatsoever about this setup. Are you sure about that? Um, if you would pay attention over there, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, 17% of the World of Tanks players are using improved aiming unit over stabilizer. That's bad. Do not use it. Don't do that. It is not good. It's no bueno. Um, this is not the right way to do the things. And that pretty much means 17% of the players that are playing with IS-6, uh, they, either they are not bothering to um, change equipment to the better one, or either they don't care, or either um, they, they do not know what it does, right? So it is important thing to uh, highlight, right? This is purely for art. Do not use it anywhere. Spall liner, in my humble opinion, it is useless. Uh, useless. I don't think uh, yeah, this is this is a good equipment set up by any shape or any form, but pretty much it is absorbing some high explosives, and it is. Um it is uh, uh, protecting you from the ramming damage and from the crew stun and whatnot. Uh, for me, Spoliner is nothing extraordinary and it's nothing special and I personally do not use it, but I've seen some crazy builds like mouse Spoliner, uh, hardening and some sort of turbo and people are going in front with a big smile on their face. For me, I don't simply think uh, this equipment is useful whatsoever. Uh, improved hardening, one of the best equipments in the game. Uh, you are using this for the tanks that you want to get more hit points, uh, mainly heavy tanks and medium tanks and tank destroyers, or I suppose to say assault tank destroyers. I'm not talking about the guerrilla sniping from the back. I am talking about uh, um, E3, Badger, um, Blitzkavica. Something what needs to play aggressively so you are going to have the more track hit points and more hit points overall. This is important. Now, modified configuration is kind of useless nowadays considering that we have uh, um, experimental equipment and we will talk about this in a second, right? But overall, uh, modified configuration is protecting you from getting uh, critical hits. So, for example, you are playing with a Super Conqueror, you are getting your ammo rack is taking one for the team, or Centurion Action X, or Leopard, whatever. You are putting this and you are protecting your ammo rack, right? This is how it goes. Now, moving on next, Camonet. Camonet is, uh, in my humble opinion, useless equipment setup, right? I do not recommend to use it by any shape or any form. Why would you use Camonet? Uh, to get 5% to stationary vehicle whenever you can use low noise exhaust and you can get uh, the same effect or very close for getting the same effect while moving. Tell me why. It's, it doesn't make sense. So this should be ditched out and low noise exhaust system is the best. And speaking about the low noise exhaust system, low noise exhaust system is boosting your camo rating. And whenever you are using it, you are pretty much, uh, it's harder to spot you. Very useful for, uh, uh, in my opinion, for light tanks, right? For uh, ultimate spotting um 
situations and overall for some tank destroyers if you want to do that, right? But for me, this is purely light tank equipment setup or medium tank setup if you are uh, spotting for your team. Optics, uh, quite simple, uh, better view range, right? It works all the time. Um, Binos is giving you significantly more view range than optics, but Binos works only whenever you are stationary. Uh, there is some uh, cases that you can use Binos, but overall uh, it is kind of either lower tier equipment setup or either for specific builds as an example um, as an example Esterva tier 10 you can use Binus potentially because even if you turn the Binus will be activated for you because of the siege mode then we have turbocharger it is making your tank to go faster and you have more horsepower so pretty much the tank is faster and grousers in my opinion it's usually useless apart couple of cases whenever um, whenever your ground resistance are so bad that turbo doesn't do anything but the grousers uh, gives you a bit more boost uh, overall right just because you have better ground resistances right uh, but overall turbo is goat compared to uh, grousers some crazy people are combining both of them and they are going like crazy mother trackers and front and obviously it depends on the play style now Bounty equipment setup is literally the same thing. Improved uh, uh, setup is literally the same thing, but better. Right? So what I said about the standard, that same goes for bounty and improved equipment setup. Now, experimental, like I mentioned it before, it is two um, equipment setups combined together. First of all, we have uh, mobility improved system. It is combining the turbo and it is combining the um, um, era ERM rotation mechanism right so pretty much your tank is more nimble right that's the whole uh, point of all of the turbo right um it is not it is not bad setup in many situations it can work better it can work better than the turbo for example you don't feel like your tank is very accurate uh, but you want to be more nimble than you would be with a turbo you are using this because you are getting improved rotation mechanism as well right so it is not bad whatsoever now this is in my opinion the best setup and this deserves the most talking survival improved suite uh, this is combining the hardening and this is combining the modified configuration. So those two setups are combined into one. And what you are getting from this, you are getting more track hit points. You are getting more hit points overall. You are getting protection from your armor axe or being lit on fire or something. Uh, it is just goat equipment setup. And in my opinion, this is the most useful of those three. And last but not least, we have a fire control system which is giving you aiming speed and it is giving you um, dispersion so pretty much uh a combination of the of this equipment the setup is uh, enchanted gun laying drive and vertical stabilizer in my humble opinion this is straight up useless i think this is worth absolutely nothing and i think uh, you would get uh, better use by using uh, stabilizer honestly speaking so in my humble opinion it's just straight up useless right now we know what every and each equipment is doing now uh where to use them and skill can you give us some examples we need examples i have you covered fellas everything is okay listen uh once again i just want to highlight that we have index page and you can see equipment setup recommended list from my side from other super good players like Daki. um Death games, Mouse Acrobat, Myland, and and many many others, right? So use it; it's free. Have some fun and enjoy yourself. And say in the same time, you are going to see the equipment setups with experimental equipment if you can afford it, because this is very hard equipment to come by, right? It is very equi hard equipment to come by. So if I want to make the perfect tank, what I am doing. This equipment setup is not perfect, but from the from the bad way it can work. If I cannot afford anything else, I use the standard equipment. If you can use the bound equipment, you use bound equipment, bond equipment, you use bond equipment, and even better. What Super Conqueror has? Skill Super Conqueror is getting armor act all the time. That's right. So what do you need to use? You need to use experimental hardening, and you are going to have the best time ever because the chance of you getting armor 
your act will decrease significantly. This is how you are doing the things, right? So if you notice that your tank is getting button of the critical hits, you are using experimental hardening. So for example, 113 is being lit on fire. Fine, you are using experimental hardening, right? Um, you are playing with... Um, what else is having the problems? Ah, you are playing with a Fava 215B. You have a problems with this vehicle because you are being lit on fire. You are using experimental hardening. That's great. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Now, the situations when you want to be a bit faster and you have decent enough gun handling. So, for example, E5. There is no problem with E5 to play with ventilation, um, uh, rammer, and improved aiming unit. But in the same time, you can use hardening, uh, rammer, uh, stabilizer, or you can use uh, uh, turbo uh, hardening and rammer. It's completely fine. It is depending on you. Let's see what players are using. Yeah, as you can see, most of the folks are using uh, this type of setup and this is old school setup which works just fine depending on the situation and depends how you are playing but keep this in mind you can use in mobility improvement so you are going to get uh, uh, quite a bit of the turbo power plus on top of that you are still going to have the turning power and you are going to uh, have tiny touch uh, smaller um, reticle as well because uh, improved rotation mechanism gives you uh, this power and improved rotation mechanism is giving you dispersion during the vehicle movement and traverse right so you need to think about this and obviously there is guides how you can set up the tanks like i said before fire control system is absolutely useless and the rule of thumb is Whenever there is a battle pass, you are always taking bounty equipment as a reward. Always. Doesn't matter what we're gaming is selling. They are selling the goose with a golden egg or they are selling the Britney Spears uh, signature portrait. It doesn't really matter. You take the experimental equipment and over time you are, uh, sorry, not experimental, the bounty equipment. And over time you are getting so many of those. For example, I have 20 bounty aimings. I have... Uh, six bounty exhausts i have four um gun laying drives and whatnot and many 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 other equipment pieces as you can see yourself uh, there is plenty of them that i accumulated over the time right uh, this is important setup so if you can afford it, if you have bounty, bounty is better than standard and improved um, aiming and improved or bond equipment is just simply better than bounty. Simple as this. I don't really think there is too much uh, things to talk other than that, fellas. All you need to understand, you need to understand the base equipment setup is standard equipment setup, right? Um, and after that, everything above that is uh, pretty much bonus to you. Um, and you are feeling great if you can afford it. Also, keep this in mind. If it happened to be that you are grinding the tank, right? You can always use bounty setup. And after that, you can simply demount it uh, like so. And you are simply forgetting it. And you are moving to the next vehicle, right? It is also important thing to say. And overall, fellas, I hope this video was useful. I hope hope I described um, everything okay uh, and I hope boys and girls ladies and gentlemen that um, you found this video useful overall right I'm trying to talk as simple as possible just to um, just to highlight the importance of all of this and uh, you know in the end of the day fellas if you are having fun without equipment, have fun without equipment. Have some fun, enjoy yourself, and just uh, have a good time in the game. That's the most important thing. Anyways, that was your daily dose of skill, and see you soon. Skill is out for today. Peace.